You're about to watch this kid try to make $20 million selling NFTs, but that's in a few hours. Right now, he's panicking because someone has accused his project of being a scam and he's come out to say he's innocent. Um, I woke up to some crazy fight about me, some weird accusations, not sure where they come from or how I'm tied exactly. I have no bad intentions. I would never hurt anyone physically, financially or mentally. It's not in me. I'm all about my morals. All about his morals. Well, I'll let you be the judge of that because there's more to this story. Behind the face of this kid in braces sits a group of NFT scammers in the shadows. One name for this group, the NFT factory, and we're exposing them today. You see, this kid on camera is just a stooge set up to play the part of a founder by those lurking behind the scenes. And what's worse is that they've done this before, except this time the stakes are higher than ever. They stand to make $20 million on this scam, but not if we can help it. So buckle up because this is the $10 million studio. I'm your host, CoffeeZilla, the internet detective, and welcome to another investigation. Now our story begins with a project called Squiggles. I know that sounds like the name of a children's band or something, but it's not. It's an NFT project that appeared to be the next big thing. It had a ton of hype around it. But right before it launched, something happened that threatened to make it worth nothing at all. A 60 page dossier dropped hours before launch that alleged that the founder of this project, Squiggles, isn't the founder at all, but instead a paid puppet. It alleges that the real people behind Squiggles are a group that has been going around creating scam after scam. And the question is, is that true? Well, today we're gonna find out. In order to do so, we have to talk about a group of LA wannabes, the main suspects being these three, Gabe, Gavin, and Ali. Now I'm intentionally going to leave their last names out of this report because I think one of them is in high school. Cause you know, gotta start early on that scam grind. But let me say, fellas, if you're gonna do this and scam people, you really should hide your identities better instead of flex on Instagram. Just a free tip from me. But basically this dossier meticulously documents over 60 pages allegations of these three being behind not just squiggles, but several NFT scams, including League of Sacred Devils, League of Divine Beings, Vault of Gems, Sinful Souls, Dirty Dogs, Lucky Buddhism, Covered, Faceless, and on and on and on. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go through all these 60 pages, but to summarize it, basically, these guys churn out NFT projects that have the appearance of trust and quality, and then after launching, it turns out they're just cash grabs. The way they do it is by setting up projects that all seem unrelated and run by a bunch of different people, but aren't. They're run by mostly the same people and it's a big racket. For example, here's one of these guys, Gavin. He's publicly admitting to running the project Sinful Souls. Hey, we're the owners of Sinful Souls and we're here in LA at one of the biggest NFT and crypto mixers to date. But then behind the scenes, he's also caught in projects where he's not listed, such as this one, which was called Faceless. Here he is discussing with another co-conspirator whose identity they're going to use as the face of this thing. Quote, obviously Centurion is gay. So do you want me to list him as the owner of the site? Yeah, Travis might be doxxed as Centurion, lol. Then when talking about who should be listed as the advisor, marketer, and artist, Gavin says, well, make it up. He gives an example of what he means. Quote, hello, I am a 3D artist for this project. I've been creating art for the past six years, and it is my first time that I am working on NFTs. When I am creating art, I'm always thinking of a quote from Frank Camaro. People ignore designs that ignore people. And that is really powerful when you grasp the meaning. Wow, these people are so dumb that they make fake artists with fake inspirations to fulfill their backstory. And then it's not done there. They then have to do a fake giveaway to generate hype. Here's Gavin once again saying, also, you have an alt we can give away to? Lol. Logan says, yeah. Gavin replies, okay, have it react and we'll give away in a few hours. In other words, the giveaway is fake. They give it to their friends, but this generates more hype for their project. Now, after all this happened, this Logan character you're seeing here got uh, to feel a little bad about what he did. He was sorry about it. He said in a statement that this was simply a cash grab, that the actual two real owners aren't Travis at all, but instead Gavin and Gabe. And the reason I'm showing you this is this is emblematic of what they would do every time they would need a new front man for their schemes. But behind the scenes, the people making the real decisions were usually one of these three, Gavin, Gabe, or Ali. 
and they kept needing new doxes to put as the front man because every time one person was responsible for a rug pull or scam, they needed a new guy in the future so they couldn't be traced back. Gavin and Gabe got doxed on this project and then on League of Divine Beings, Ollie got doxed. So their identities were burned and they had to start hiring new people to be the public founders of a project, basically puppets. And this is where Arsalan is gonna come in, our, our young, young kid with braces on who says that he's all about his morals. And by the way, just so you guys understand, these NFT scams make so much money that at one point, Gavin rents out an office to do it from. This is what allegedly he was calling the NFT factory. Quote, also opening an office and hiring people in real life, so no loose ends. Bruh, you got an office. Gavin responds, yeah, gonna have 10 plus people working sales and on these projects. Gotta spit out at least five to 10 before it ends. So now that you have a basic understanding of their pattern of behavior, we're gonna go back to Squiggles because this project was looking to be their most lucrative one yet. It was gonna be the most expensive and had the most people following it and hyped up about it. $20 million was potentially on the line and everything was looking perfect. After doing this many times, maybe they perfected the formula and all they had to do was lay low. But of course, they couldn't do it they decided that success was almost assured and they decided to go out and party and celebrate. This is where they screwed up because it turns out some pictures were taken that night on Instagram showing Arsalan, the supposed founder of Squiggles and Gavin together in the same Rolls Royce. Then later they appeared at the same club holding a sign that said Squiggles Boys. And then a photo appeared with Gavin, Ali and Gabe all in the same photo. Pretty quickly, people put two and two together and hours before launch, all of this information came out going viral, that this super hyped launch is actually coming from a bunch of serial scammers. So that brings us back up to speed to Mr. Morals here. And I'm gonna let his statement play again, only a bit longer now that you understand the context. I'm all about my morals. Uh, people are just trying to paint a picture that's not true and they're trying to ferment fear. Um, I was at the club with friends of friends who didn't have a good reputation in the space. Um, now they're trying to tie me to them. It's not how it works, guys. Please do not jump to conclusions. Don't jump to conclusions. Guys, I was just at the same club. I was just in the same vehicle as them. Guys, it's just, it's all a coincidence. They're just friends of friends. And that maybe would have been a good argument if someone didn't almost immediately leak a screenshot of Gabe, one of these guys, telling Arsalan, quote, you got an AMA coming up, Poppy. Better start preparing. And then even more, all accusing Gavin, Ali, and Gabe of being behind this. Now, it's at this point you might think, okay, so these guys are caught red-handed. They're screwed. They're not going to make any money with this, right? But you'd be wrong. 30 minutes after launch, $7 million worth of squiggles had been bought. And honestly, this really disheartened me, watching so many people walk into what was so clearly a scam. How could they be this naive? Well, maybe they weren't. Is that $7 million all real? This is where things are about to get a little weird. See, as I looked closer at this $7 million that was generated, things didn't really look right. A lot of the buyers were brand new and I was confused why. Could it be that all of the buyers were brand new to crypto? I mean, there were so many that had never done anything on Etherscan before. And that's when I discovered something a series of shadow wallets all created by one person that were all buying tons of squiggles, millions of dollars worth of fake volume, and then immediately flipping them on OpenSea for less money. Digging backwards, I found a single account that spent 800 Ethereum, which is over $2 million spread across two transactions that created hundreds of new wallets. Each of these shadow wallets then bought three squiggles a piece and immediately listed them on OpenSea for less money. Now you might be wondering, why do this? Why buy $2 million worth of squiggles only to sell them for less? Who in their right mind would do this? Well, the only reason that makes sense to me is they were trying to give the illusion of huge interest to get people to buy in, to make people think this had a lot of trading volume, a lot of hype. And the only people who could possibly want to do that is of course, the team behind Squiggles. Although it's worth saying they deny this, saying it's a hater trying to bring them down. I reached out to Arsalan, the supposed founder, and he didn't respond. So where does that leave us? Well, it's currently unknown how much of the Squiggles $7 million is fake volume created by 
one account or real volume. Word from anonymous sources is that they made roughly $3 million in profit, although I couldn't get anyone to go on the record about this, so we don't know. Either way, they were stopped from making the $20 million they could have made, and that's good. Less than 24 hours later, these guys got delisted on OpenSea, and their founder went private on Instagram. But our story isn't quite over yet, because the team behind this isn't exactly happy with how things went down. Why would they be? They potentially lost millions of dollars. So they're angry at anyone who helped expose them. This is according to sources who started coming out of the woodwork saying that this team has begun to threaten them for coming out. According to one person, quote, they told me they would send people to my house and get my parents fired. The guy who exposed one of their older scams said, quote, I was getting lawsuit threats, which were fake. Then it escalated to threats against my family about getting articles written and published that my parents children. Finally, worst of all, one message said, my private messages are crazy, but low key fear for my life. As these guys put hits out, I am being deadly serious. Now I want to be clear, nothing has happened that I know of, and hopefully these stay what they are right now, just threats. However, now that the cat is out of the bag on how these guys operate, hopefully scamming will get harder for these guys. And many people will realize that behind that cool new shiny NFT project created by some cool artist who's doing NFTs for the first time, there may be more behind the scenes than you realize. And maybe one day the feds will get involved and put a stop to this stuff. But until then, Gavin is still hiring for the factory. That's it for now. Subscribe, pump the stock. I'll see you in the next investigation.